Games are supposed to be fun, but there are times when backlash can get straight up ridiculous. These are the 10 dumbest video game controversies. Starting off the list is probably one of the more bizarre controversies to ever go public, and with Mario of all characters, the lovable Italian plumber known the world over found himself in legal hot water when the animal rights activist group PETA, you might wonder, what could a game do that would cause so much controversy? No, it wasn't for jumping on Koopas or using Yoshi as an ejection seat. <coughs> But instead, PETA went after Mario for wearing one of his special costumes, the Tanuki suit. Objection! They even took it as far as creating a parody Mario game that lets you take revenge. Now we're not meteorologists or anything, but doesn't he also turn into... A frog, a penguin, a cat, a balloon, a shoe, a giant, a metal? Mario isn't skinning harmless animals, he is a powerful, shape-shifting warlock. It all makes sense now. Nice try, PETA. Sure, we all wish we could play games all day, every day, but life gets in the way, and sometimes you're forced to take a break. Well, if you play the MMO Lost Ark, then it's... Bye bye, dude! Controversy struck when it was discovered players who had been inactive for prolonged periods of time had their accounts banned. So if you spent hundreds of hours in the game or paid real money for any cosmetics, you were out of luck. Lost Ark's Steam page got review bombed, and players shared screenshots of not being able to log in the game. Fortunately, this is one controversy that has a happy ending. The developers explained the bans were the result of a bug that was supposed to help players by removing the countless bot accounts crowding its marketplace and populated areas. The sweep was successful, removing up to 200,000 bots, and the developers said the banned accounts would be restored. Everybody wins. During a time when most players were already on the fence about the idea of DLC becoming a major part of games moving forward, the flame was fueled to the point of controversy by Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Originally meant to be the first of two licensed crossover fighting games, a one-two combo of low sales and disputes over its paid DLC nailed the coffin shut on this kinda awesome fanfic pipe dream. Street Fighter Cross Tekken included an additional 12 exclusive characters that PlayStation Vita owners would get for free, but if you owned a PS3 or a 360, you would have to pay extra for them. Making matters even worse, the additional characters were already on the disc. You heard right, even if customers bought the disc, they still had to pay more to use them. We're not saying this killed the disc DLC entirely, but we haven't seen many discs around lately. Coincidence? Knock <laughs> on this! Thanks to the massive popularity of games like Overwatch and PUBG, loot boxes were quickly becoming an all too common feature. Let's face it, they were getting way out of hand, but Star Wars Battlefront 2 was the straw that broke the gamers back. At launch, it received widespread criticism for its loot boxes containing powerful upgrades that players accused of being pay to win. EA went on to state that loot boxes were actually ethical and compared them to Kinder Eggs, you know, those things we can't get in the states. Shock a doobie! The backlash was so severe, Battlefront 2 was quickly given an overhaul, removing the microtransactions altogether. Other games soon followed suit, only allowing cosmetic items to be sold through loot boxes. Since then, Battlefront 2 has been a solid, enjoyable experience, but getting greedy almost cost it more than just a fan base. Lesson learned, right? Right? Strategic calculations can't beat know-how and ingenuity. Just because a game is controversial doesn't mean that controversy can't be funny. From the moment Halo Infinite was announced, it was ridiculed with development issues like outsourcing work and dealing with COVID, but anybody familiar with The Chief knows that the franchise has been steadily declining for a while now. Nevertheless, fans were still eager to catch a glimpse of Halo's next outing, and when it was finally shown in a gameplay trailer, the internet responded by pulling a screenshot of an exceptionally poor-looking brute from it, and Craig was born. <laughs> Even if Craig is totally hilarious, he was a stark reminder to the developers that they still had a lot of work to do. It was delayed until December 2021, where it was met with mediocre reviews. The sheer lack of content and dated look and shoddy performance of the game made players drop off fast. But hey, thanks for the laughs, Craig. <laughs> We know it may be a hot take, but we'll just come out and say it. Nazis are bad. Phew, that was a huge weight off our shoulders, but when the developers of the Wolfenstein series started marketing for the new Colossus, a game about killing Nazis, things took a turn for the questionable. The game gained attention for being promoted with the tagline, Make America Nazi Free Again, a play on the now infamous phrase. Despite Wolfenstein always being a game where Nazis are the enemies, this time was met with angry posters accusing the developers of pushing an agenda during a turbulent time. If this is their idea of pushing an agenda, Thank you. 
It's a pretty sweet one if you ask us. The controversy eventually blew over and went on to sell like hotcakes and win awards. See kids, that's what happens when you stick to your guns. Literally, in BJ's case. After games like Watch Dogs and The Division underwent noticeable graphical downgrades since their impressive E3 showings, players are usually skeptical when a game looks really good, but Spider-Man's debut at E3 2016, it was a different story. Fans were hyped and audiences all over were impressed with its scale, combat, and graphics. To this day, it remains the PlayStation YouTube channel's second most watched game trailer. When Spider-Man dropped, some had started to suspect it had gotten a downgrade. Their proof? And we're not making this up. The game's lack of puddles. Huge areas of wet floors shown in the E3 trailer were more scattered in the final release. Developers took to the internet to alleviate concerns. Nothing that the puddles hadn't been removed, just moved. They even poked fun at puddleage and included a puddle sticker you can add in photo mode. Stay classy, Spider-Man. Hey, where are you going? Horizon Forbidden West is still in the running for being one of PlayStation 5's best-looking games, but bringing Aloy's all-new lifelike characteristics to the next-gen console came with some odd retaliation. The original version of Aloy, the mechanical dinosaur hunter, was scrapped to create a much more realistic protagonist this time around, but when the game was released, posts started popping up on Twitter asking why Aloy had a beard. A beard? Wait, are they talking about the peach fuzz? That stuff everybody has? Many were quick to point out that the accusers have never been close to a female, and that it was a testament to just how much graphics had advanced. Either way, it's a controversy that rose and fell quickly, only proving that it doesn't matter how much time and work you put into something, you can't please everyone. Before its inevitably successful release, God of War Ragnarok was on the business end of not just one, but two notable controversies. After months of waiting, a first look at its gameplay was finally shown, only to be met with players accusing the developers of cutting corners and refusing animations. Uh, what did they expect? He was gonna know karate and start hand gliding, and if that wasn't ridiculous enough, there were even complaints about the shape of Thor's body. Yeah, even fictional characters aren't safe from fat shaming. I guess they were expecting a Marvel tie-in or something? But all the complaining in the world couldn't stop God of War from being one of the highest selling titles, even almost taking the title of Game of the Year. Like most controversies on the list, the outrage only lasted a few days before completely disappearing, but it's still dumb enough to make the list. Regardless of how you feel about something, telling people what or what not to do almost always has the opposite effect. The internet found this out the hard way when Hogwarts Legacy, the long-awaited open-world wizard sim, was nearing its release. In the weeks before launch, a major push to halt sales popped up all over social media due to the franchise creator's opinions. The developers addressed the rising controversy, saying that the game was made for everyone, and when Hogwarts Legacy came out, the numbers spoke for themselves. After just two weeks, it had already sold more than 12 million units. Some content creators even donated the proceeds to charity. With an outcome like this, it sounds like Hogwarts Legacy has done more good than harm in spite of the harassment, and that's why it takes the spot. And that's our list for the 10 dumbest video game controversies. Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay up to date with future videos. Thanks for watching!